Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to add an e-stop to your Holly EFI system. Um, if you aren't aware of what an e-stop is, I just we sell these, but they're uh, they're you know just a red button to turn something on and off with. Uh, people like to put these inside of cars to be able to do an emergency kill. This is not in place of a battery kill switch. If you're wiring a car from scratch, you can you know use a uh, remote disconnect for a battery kill switch. But this is it. You know this kind of tutorial is, is for somebody who wants to be able to shut the engine off uh, and not actually kill power to the ECU. So uh, we do these with a uh, with a with a few different combinations. Um, a lot of nitrous guys like to keep like to do this uh, so they can shut the engine off but leave all the uh, all the all the accessory stuff on you know like fans and whatnot so this is a e-stop it's just a red button on off so I'm going to show you how to do put an e-stop into the ECU to shut the engine off I'm also going to show you a couple other little things that that we do in order to control your injector and coil power a little bit uh, better a little bit more intuitively and uh, how to you know make the make it have a little bit more control and input from you. So anyway, so this is an e-stop. So let's assume that you've bought one of these and you've mounted it somewhere in the car. We're going to go into the Holly software and I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's, we're going to go back to that. So what we need to do first is create an input, right? E-stop right here, and then we also need to uh look at what we're also going to do here is we're going to make another input called injector slash coil loop okay so i do these with a lot of cars and what we have learned is in order to build a nicer cleaner harness sometimes you need to have an output turn on in a different connector as opposed to j1a to turn on your relay for your uh, fuel pump and your injectors and your coils so what we do is we we loop uh, the, the wire from J1A2, and um, this is why we have the help folder up. So if you don't know, this is J1A on a on an HP. This is J1A on a dominator. And if we scroll down, this is the pinout. So for J1A, no matter if it's a dominator or an HP, the pinout's the same. If we look at J1A2, this is our fuel pump out. What this does is sends a 12-volt signal to trigger a relay and if you're using a plug and play harness, you have a relay built into the harness. This is the trigger wire for it. This wire goes active during fuel pump prime time that you program into the software, which is right here. And if you program this for zero, it does not go active prior to seeing engine RPM. If you program it to five seconds, it goes active for five seconds. And then the other way it turns on is once it sees engine RPM. So this wire goes hot at engine RPM and at uh, prime time, the amount of time that you set for the fuel pump prime. So we, we loop these for, for two reasons. One, there's no programming logic to manipulate this output. It's just pre-canned into the software. So what I do, what we, what we do here is we, we loop A2 into, we create an input and we loop it to a three. So all this is is an injector coil loop, right? So we're just, we're, we're sending the wire out of A2 and going right back into A3. So the wire is only gonna be like three inches long, two terminals, one on either end, and you loop it back into itself. So it's now an input. Then we create a new output, which we call injector coil out, right? And then we can put that wherever we want on the ECU, but we also have better control of it. So uh, before we get into the e-stop portion of it, we can look at how we configure this. So the way we do it is this output will activate when injector coil loop, which is our input, is enabled, or when the e-stop is disabled. So what that means is if the, if the injector coil loop is enabled, as in that fuel pump prime time, uh, it will turn the switch on as long as the e-stop is disabled. So we don't want to enable the e-stop, the e that's how we shut it off, right? So the other option would be if you had an injector coil loop, that'd be fine. 
Uh, you could also do a sensor input trigger or it would be RPM above 50 if that's what you want to do. So then we look at our fuel pump out right here. Not the fuel pump 100%. This has got a uh, an aeromotive pump on it. So that's to trigger it to run at 100%. Uh, fuel pump out, what we do is the same thing. E-stop is disabled and the injector coil loop is enabled. Well, if we didn't want that fuel pump to run when the during the fuel pump prime time, uh, we could just remove the injector coil loop and we can say when the e-stop is, is, is disabled and engine RPM is above 50. So that means it won't prime the fuel system anymore. It won't prime the fuel pump anymore. So some people don't like to have it, you know, when you turn the ignition on to have the, uh, the fuel pump run for a few seconds before it, you know, it sees RPM. So some people do, some people don't. This is just an option. I'm not telling you one way or the other. It's just that, you know, over the years we've encountered, um, you know, people that we, we tune for, that we've fixed wiring for, or whatever it may be, that uh, have certain wants and, and needs. So, so anyway, we go back to our input output. We have already created our injector coil loop down here. Okay, it's 12 volt. It's going A3. That's our little three inch wire. And then we go to our output and we have injector coil out. So this is a 12 volt signal. It's being turned on when the e-stop is disabled and the injector coil loop is enabled. So if you left that e-stop down, when you turn the ignition on, it will not prime the fuel system. It won't run the fuel pump. It won't, you know, so this is also, it won't, it won't energize, uh, it won't send 12 volt out to the coils or to the injectors. So this is also something if you were doing, you know, diagnosed, diagnostic or something to try to hunt down, you know, a 12 volt issue or 16 volt issue, you can use your e-stop to do that as well. And we, so we loop, we've already looped the wire. Now we have an output. And of course these outputs are going to be triggering a relay, right? Or multiple relays. So the fuel pump is on its own relay. Uh, the injectors and coils are on their own relays. So when you press the e-stop button that's mounted in the car, it shuts off the injectors and the coils and the fuel pump, uh, but it doesn't shut down the ECU. So the the dash will stay on, and you know, I mean, like the uh, the data log will keep running as long as you've got it, you know, programmed to stay running. Uh, so you get to, you know, as you you can see a whole bunch of stuff during shutdown, like especially with a nitrous car, people want to click them off right at the stripe. And that's fine, but sometimes people want to have the rest of the log during decel. Uh, not that the engine's decelerating because the engine's going to shut off, but, you know, maybe drive shaft speed or whatever, shocks or whatever it may be. So the other thing that we do with the e-stop is we create an e-stop power function, right? So this is, the ECU is sending out, a 12 volt signal to our switch. So instead of having a rat's nest of wire coming off of a bunch of different locations and you're trying to send 12 volt or ground, whatever it may be, out to your e-stop, the e-stop only gets 12 volt when the ECU is on and the battery is above eight volts. And of course you can change these input triggers to whatever you want, you know? So um, you, you could do it, uh, you know, however you want. This is also, you can hide this and this can also be a no start scenario, right? So you can make this as kind of a semi anti theft device. You could hide this e stop switch somewhere or any switch you want. You know, I mean, it could be a toggle switch somewhere so that if somebody, if you parked the car somewhere and you were afraid of somebody just being able to steal it, you could do this little e stop deal or a toggle switch or whatever it may be so that the car could not start. So it's just another, another thought process in it. So, when we go to the pin map, I'll kind of give you a rundown. Um, if we view fixed, there it is, A2 fuel pump relay out, and it is going to A3. Then we go to view our outputs, and we've got our, where is it? Injector coil out is right here, J2B22. That's triggering a relay. And then we've got B23. That's triggering the fuel pump relay. So now we have the ability to manipulate all this type of stuff to do what we want when we want it. Um, and instead of just having to tolerate it turning on, you know, however long you set that fuel pump prime time to, 
and uh, and then when when it sees RPM. So this is something that you know we've done and uh, you know, over over the past few years. And um, uh, actually, my my fiance is a big fan of doing things this way because uh, you know if there is a a issue or, or you know or something or if you're diagnosing something, you have the ability to just kill the car right there with a uh, with a button inside of the car. So um, hopefully this helps. Hopefully it educates you all some. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think. And if you got any other ideas on, um, on e-stop usage or switch usage, uh, let me know. See you.